Well, hello, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers, and I will serve as your host today. We bring to you today a short webinar on TWI facilitated by Gerard Berenson and Carla Latinauers. They are co-founders and certified TWI trainers of the TWI Institute Netherlands and the TWI Institute Germany. We will try to make time for some questions at the end. If you have questions, you can submit those using the GoToWebinar toolbar on the right side of your screen. And please note that today's session will be recorded, so we will send you a link later in the day today with a, uh, a link to that recording, and feel free to share that among those that you work with. So for now, I'm going to turn it over to Carla, I believe. Yes, hello, Dwayne. Thank you for uh, the invitation. Uh, I just got a message from Gerard who sent me an SMS that he is also in because he was a few minutes later. So welcome everybody. Gerard will join and he will jump in as soon as he's in place. Today uh, yep. we're going to speak about implementation of job instruction. And the title of the presentation is Continuously Improvement Daily Work for Supervisors. Basics for the standardized work uh, and for effective training. I'm trying. The standard for TWI Institute at the moment is set in many places in the world. We are based in Germany and the Netherlands, uh, but we're all working together as a global partners in the whole world. And uh, I think it's important that people know that the way of implementation, we have a kind of a standard which helps to work with global companies to, to do the same kind of implementation. That's why I'm going to show you this slide. So in general, the focus for the target group for TWI, maybe people already know what we'll just remember, it's the supervisors, so the first people on the shop floor who helps people to do their work. And in the principles of TWI, it says we need five competences to have a good supervisor. We need to know the knowledge of the work, and we need to know the responsibility of the work, and this can only be learned within the company and cannot be generally be learned. The other three skills are skills which can be learned in general. Skills for instructing, skill for improving the method in the daily work, and skill for how to lead people and have good relationships with people. So those three items, the three skills, these are the skills we can learn by TWI. It's a general skill every supervisor can learn. And today we're going to have to focus on how to use the skill for instructing. So supervisors are the ones who need to instruct people. Not only supervisors, but at least supervisors need to know. And if you look in this picture, you see that there is a triangle on, on downwards in the, in the, on the slide. You see that job relations and job instruction are basic steps we need to have in place before we're going to do improvements. So that is why also we are saying if you don't have good relationship, you should work with good relationships to build on the structure. That's why this job Instruction is the other structure we are always needing to do before we do improvements. So those three, two triangles are standing stable in this triangle, and only if those things are in place, we can do the next step. So that's why we're we'll today going to talk about job instruction. And why is this done? Because we often see lean methods not working at all. We have lean events like this here, and it does bring a result. The performance will go up. And in the ideal way, the, the performance will be the same, but, and then in the next event, we'll have a next lean event, and the new performance will rise again. But in reality, it 
us not always like this. In reality, we need a stabilized process to keep this performance in place. That's why we need instructing people, we need to have standardized work to keep those standards in place, and we need to have a positive environment to make sure that the people who keep this st standard stable who are going to work on it. So standardization is not something that happens without doing anything. It needs energy too. That's why those two parts, job instruction and job relations, are stabilizing parts of the program of TWI. Yeah, and after each lean event, this is needed to keep these performance in place. And only by this, the planned plan we going to have with lean events can be the actual plan. So that's why we need peoples in place and we need lean instruments to work on the both sides on keeping, sustaining improvements. Yeah. And it's how Tai Chi Ono says, without standards there cannot be Kaizen. Without foundation we cannot grow. Without roots a tree cannot grow either. So that's the reason of TWI, why it's needed at the moment. Today we're going to talk about TWI job instruction. You know, if we talk about standards, often people think we are putting standards top down and we push them to the people. We're going to tell to the people how they have to work. But standards cannot be forced down from above but they should be set by production workers themselves. Taichi Ono said by himself. And this is important message we need to think of when we do job instruction. So by implementing job instruction, this will be one of the pillars we need to work on. This is one of the basics. So if we look at the definition of what is job instruction. Job instruction is the way to get a person to quickly remember to do a job correctly, safely and conscientiously. So what does this mean? If we look at the black parts in the presentation, it says we, it's a way to get a person remember a job. So if we train more than one person at one time, we, it's not job instruction. Job instruction is helping on one-on-one -on -one base. And we are helping the one who learns, so the operator, the person, will help the person to do his job quickly. And learning is also a skill. And the instructor has the responsibility that the learner can learn well. If the learner didn't learn, the instructor didn't instruct. That's the motto. So that's the definition of job instruction. We want the operator to do and learn the job correctly, safely, because no incidents and engineers we want to have. And only not, uh, and besides having the job done correctly and safely, we also want the operator to understand what he or she is doing. Why is that? If the person doesn't know why he or she is doing a thing, motivation will not be in there. So the item conscientiously is also a very important part of job instruction. And if we instruct people, this is a, a, a goal we want to achieve. We don't want to do people to do the job only well, but we also want them person to understand the job well, so the person is motivated to do the job well. So that's why job instruction is based on one-on-one, -on -one because it's also for motivation, reasons to do that one-on-one, -on -one, and we also want the person to quickly remember it. And it means that every person has his own tempo of learning. And if we learn person not on a one-on-one -on -one base, we cannot do what's best for the learner. So that's why we will also look what will help the operator to quickly remember to do the job well. And the four step methods is the basics to do this instruction. If we look at the four step methods, it has four general steps. The first step is about preparing the worker. The second step is about 
showing the operation, present the operation three times, and then we'll ask the worker to do the job. And we're going to see if the person is doing well. And on the last step, follow up, it means we'll do and put some steps aside, so, so we'll put things in place so we'll have a follow up for the worker to make sure that he is uh, happy before we say you get your responsibility and do your work. Those four steps are done by a reason. If you think of step one, we need to prepare the worker because often instructions are done without that step. We'll just start without any explanation at all. And people will be insecure. Maybe they miss at the beginning of an instruction, they miss what you were saying. Or we just don't have any good relation with the person. So step one is very important to get a connection with the person you're going to instruct, but also to make the person at ease. And that's why we will tell what the job is, what we're going to teach. We'll also ask what the person knows. And we're going to tell why this, important, why this uh, job is so important to do and what can go wrong. So people get interested in learning the job. And before we present the operations, we will make sure that the person can see how we will show the job very well. So that's very important. So we have prepared the worker well, so then he can see what we show. And then we go to step two. It means present the operation. The card says, tell, show, and illustrate one important step at the time. So the first time you're going to show the work, you only tell important steps. This is important. And the second time you do it again, which you tell also key points, and the third time you do it again, and by doing it again you will tell the reasons of the key points. In step two, it's very important to be very patiently, and be quiet so people can really understand what you are presenting. It's a skill you need to learn. And after step two, the operators will be asked to do the job without saying anything and we make sure that the person can do the job and we help if errors exist, so we correct errors if needed. The operator himself will do the job four times and by each time he repeats the job, we'll ask him to, do, to tell us the important steps, to tell us the key points and also at the last time to tell us the reasons for the key points. Why do we want people to repeat? We want people to repeat while they are doing so they, they drill the job themselves by doing it again and again and by telling what they are doing we also know what they know. So this is the only way how we can make sure that the person does understand the job. And this is also the way how we will know if the person can do the job conscientiously. So that's why it says, make sure the person understands until you know that they know. Yeah? And even if it's needed, we will ask the person to do the job again until we are happy and see that the person can do the job well. And then we'll start at step four, it's the follow-up. We'll tell the person what we saw and we'll, if we see that the person did the job well, so that the person can do the job on their own. And we also need to tell where the person can go and that we want the person to ask us questions and that we will be there to check frequently. It's one of the reasons which is important that job instruction keeps the relation with the operator so that the operator can give ideas but also ask questions to, be, to do the job conscientiously. So that's based in step four. And as you can see, this is based in one card. So by the learning supervisors doing this skill, the, the, this card will be used. It's a card for job instruction. Yeah. 
And we just already said, if the worker hasn't learned, the instructor hasn't taught, so we only can see if we did our job well when the worker did learn. And if he did learn well, then we did do a good job. That's the basic. So what's different between TWI job instruction with then regular training? If we look at classic workplace training, we often see more operators trained in one time. For example, when new machines come in or a new product needs to be made, there is often a big need, so people more need people need to learn quickly. And people tend to put small groups together so that they learn quickly. And this is not what job instruction says. Job instruction says be careful, make sure you do train on a one-on-one -on -one base. The reason before to do this is that you can only know what the operator knows if you let the person tell what he knows. So that's why there's a big difference between classic workplace training and job instruction. The other big difference between job instruction and classic training is that we often see more trainers training in, in a job play, workplace and that those those trainers or instructors do have their own standards. So in this picture we see there could be trainer 1 using standard 1 and there could be trainer 2 using standard 2 and in this way people will learn not the same way of working. It's because of that it's not a standard way of working at all yet. So one of the big things in job instruction is to have one standard in place. And this standard is called job instruction breakdown sheet. You can see it one on here on the side. And we'll talk about it a bit later. But that's the main difference. We'll make sure there is one standard that all instructors will use that one same standard. And the other difference we already saw in, saw in the card, what is different with classic workplace training, that some uh, in most time Instructors do tell everything in one time. So as you can see, the instructor is telling too much information to the operator in one time. And as we could see in step two for job instruction, we could see at the first time the instructor did show the job, he only tells the important steps. By the second time, he tells the key points. And by the third time, he also tells the reasons for the key points. So by repeating the job three times, we add more and more information and in this way the operator can learn in small steps. So that's the difference. So how to implement this system? Important in implementing top instruction, it's needed to know where your goal is. What do you need? Why do you want to start job instruction? And sometimes companies just start to do the method without knowing that. Why do we think it's important? If you don't know where you're going to go, you cannot see if you're become well. So here are some helping questions which makes you helping clear what the goal of job instruction can be. And you need to ask yourself, what do we see in the future on the shop floor when standard work becomes reality? And so what will be different in the future? And how can we recognize good standard work? What will be the proof? This is important to be uh, with management to have the same vision of the future because that's why you're going to steer towards it. And the next question will be, because you probably will have a problem you will want to solve, then you can also see the progress in this problem. So do we solve the problem already? And that problem we should measure. So we can measure the facts. Problems can be done, can be based in safety, can be based on quality or delivery or costs or morale. These are all items where the problems can be and that's why you have to think for which focus we want to have for job instruction to work on with. What we often see that there are three kinds of needs for job instruction. We sometimes see that new, new people come in on, on a time, so maybe increases of production is there, or we have uh, seasonal workers there, and they are only there in the summer. And in this way, we have, uh, at a special moment, we have uh, temporary employees or new employees there, and that's the need, because we need to train them. 
Another way can be that we have a new way of methods, new work, new products, new machines. So the current people need, need to learn also a lot in one time to know how those new ways of working are going. And in the two types of needs, we see that there is a high need for training at a sudden moment. So those two ty types we often see. The third type of need is about standard work. It's a foundation in the this is not always seen immediately. So most companies start because there's a direct need for new operators or new processes. But if you think of standardization, standard work is, found, is fundamental. So a lot of companies see, because they are doing improvements, that those improvements are not sustained. And this is the third reason why companies start to work with job instruction because they want to keep those improvements sustained. And if you look at like steps like in purity <coughs> circles, you see standardization is often one of the, it's the last step in an improvement. And this is why often companies who have more uh, years of experience with lean, they find out that this is a part they are missing within their lean program. And that's uh, also a good reason to do job instruction. If you do know where you, why you want to do job instruction, then the second item is very important to think of the next topic. It's about how do you integrate it in daily problem solving. It should be done at the shop floor. That's very important. So we don't want to have big staff organization to do the training for you. The TWI program is is designed for the supervisor. So it means it's designed for the person who helps the worker on the shop floor. And that's why it's the reason it should be part of the daily routine at Gemma. It's important that during our daily gaps, controls on shop floor management, we'll look at problems on a daily basis. And one of the reasons can be that we have a problem that they are caused by a lack of a standard or lack of skill of knowledge. And this is what needs to be set in place. So if we have a system of looking at gaps, it's important that in this system we also make the connection that if we see that there is a lack of a standard or if we see there is a lack of knowledge, that we connect it to defining uh, a standard by using TWI this job instruction and by instructing the people themselves. This is important. And by doing this on the daily basis on the shop floor, we often get ideas from workers. So this is important. Also the other reasons why uh, we need to relate it to the skills and knowledge of employees is that it should be based the training plan we have, so we do plan every day or every week a training, what is planned to be done. And this should also be done related with the knowledge of the skills and the employees. If we don't do that, we cannot work on training if we don't integrate the people. And making standards will be done with the people, so this is one of the things you would do. If you see there is a lack of a standard, you're going to develop this best practice of work with the people who know and to make sure that there is one standard. And if we found that one standard, then we can execute that training by using the four steps I did show you before. So if we see that that's what we need to do, I want to show you the next slide. And this is the slide what we use by how to train supervisors in doing uh, learning the skill. And here you see the five times two hours training method. In those two hours every day, supervisors will learn to do the first four steps. Then we learn to make the break breakdown. And on Wednesday, we learn to make a training plan. The rest of the week, it's important to do a follow up too. So we did see during the five times two hours, we also exercise. So in those four, five times two hours, every participant will do a demonstration by using the four steps cards. 
And what we do in the rest of the week is we also start to exercise making job breakdowns on the shop floor. And this is what we found out is a good uh, start so that people start to connect what they learn in the classroom to do for themselves in a small scale, how this is going to work on the shop floor. And at the end of the week, you will have like four until between four and six standards already in place because you did discuss them with experts between people. So the people themselves did develop them. And after the week, the training can start. And because of this, those problems can be solved, which you had focus on. So this is important to do. Uh, the five times two hours training, that's the world standard everybody can learn. And the, the practice at the shop floor, also you can do after the week for follow-up, but this is what we notice if we do it in the same week, if those people can be freed up to do. After the week you have a good momentum so that the people can instruct immediately and they can solve the problems they had before. So this is what we have as a good experience to share and what we can have as a result is that you can see that employees like here before they have a, a less common standard. And after making a job breakdown, you can have a bigger understanding between the people, but also having a common standard in place. So this is one of the main reasons for doing job instruction, and this is what brings less defects. What makes <coughs> the other reason and effect can be we have a quicker way in instructing one person. So this person doesn't know, and the other person will tell the colleague how to do. By using job instruction, we can easily learn new workers to do their job. And we have some results of other companies that they had focus on. Here we see a company, Haberit, they use job instruction to learn workers to do their job. And the main issue here was having common standards in place, because they had uh, different deviations in uptime during changeover times and by using CWI job instruction they train all colleagues and now they are more in, in balance and the, the, the changeover times are uh, much better but also more less variations between people is in there. And what they also did after a while is after a few months they integrated doing daily improvements. So what they could see is on the shop floor small improvements are done and sustained. So this is the way where you can see an example of productivity and output is increased by making more standardization between the current people. Another example would be if a new line comes up. Here we see a line where a company often puts, uh, this is where uh, the company did put machines in place on a, on a line and this was the curve they traditionally had when they were starting up. At the beginning of the time, it took longer to learn to do the job. We have startup losses. But the major problem was after the handover. The engineers went off, the, the, the final uh, takeover was done, and then the people themselves had to run the line, and then they got problems. So they had to learn themselves again. So what you could see is that the people were not trained well by the engineers. And by using TWIs, they learned that the training, those gap was not there. So by learning it, the people will not have this problem and it also became much quicker. So the results they got here that it took from 10 months until 10 weeks to train new people on the new line. And we have another example. Yeah. Another example is in reducing failures very small items where the focus was on in making having problems with finding material and that's because because of finding material problems did happen uh, we we had a lot of failures in here yeah. and by learning and training people where to put the items very well the problems were less so you can see often a lot of quality defects you can follow up which brings a lot of money also to reduce the items. I'm hurrying a bit because I'm seeing the time and we would like to have some space for uh, questions. So 
I did tell you about TWI job instruction. Important is to have that target in place and to know where the focus is and then to integrate this on the shop floor. And that's why it's important to measure the results. Maybe there are, items, there are questions from the people out there, then please do so, because we do have some time to answer questions. Dwayne? Yeah, sorry, Carla. That's okay. Uh, so no, no questions have come in at this point. So okay. if you do have questions, uh, get them submitted in right now. Uh, okay. So does that take you to the end of what you had planned on sharing then, Carla? Yeah, that's okay. I was. Uh, it's always more than you expect. If people do have questions, you, it's always okay to send us an email and we'll answer the questions by email too. So, not a problem. Great. Well, thank you. I see that you provided uh, both your email and Gerard's email. So, thank you for, for doing that. So, since there are no questions, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, wrap things up. Um, Carla, thank you so much for uh, not only for presenting today, but for your thought leadership in these areas. Uh, greatly appreciate that. If you would like to hear more from, from Carla, uh, she will be at the TWI and Kata Summit in Hamburg, Germany. And do I understand, Carla, that Hamburg is your hometown, or am I mistaken yeah. on that? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay. And uh, there's the new music hall is just open, so it's perfect timing to go to Hamburg now. Great. We'll look forward to uh, to being there in your hometown then. And so the, the dates of the TWI and Kata Summit Europe are uh, November 30 and December 1. There's also a uh, day of workshops as well if you're interested. But if you'd like to know more about that, it's uh, you can find it at www.twiandkatasummit.eu. So again, thanks Carla. We will uh, send out a link to a recording of this webinar. Again, you can feel free to share that with others in your organization. Thanks so much for everyone's participation. Bye-bye. Thank you too, Dwayne. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.